Okay, once again working with Windows Mixed Reality headset. So after the last video, I was actually finally able to get this to work. And the build for Windows Insider Preview is 162.57.1. And you can see it down here, 162.57, although it doesn't say the point one. Um, so last time where we left off was the installer was still downloading software for the headset and it actually took about 20 minutes for the software download to finish and for the first 15 minutes the progress bar was just blank. In fact I thought it actually froze and I was about to basically cancel out of it uh, but the good news is that I decided to stick with it and after 15 minutes the bar jumped from empty to about 95% and about five minutes later it completed and after it completed it launched something called mixed reality portal um, unfortunately when it launched mixed reality portal it was blank it was just dark and it just really didn't do anything at all and i was kind of frustrated by it but luckily i decided to close it and then relaunch it and voila it started working so now I actually have the headset operational and I'm gonna put the headset on right now so I'm looking to the side looking to the side looking down at the ground and once again they can't find my space so this is probably the sixth seventh eighth time that I'll be uh, initializing my space. I just don't know why, but it just has this problem. So here I am clicking on setup. I'm doing run setup. Yes, yes, standing setup. Next, center. So there you go. And tracing. So I'm taking this thing, moving around, 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 around. So hopefully that's good enough. This cable keeps on getting tangled. Noise that out of me. I'm just untangling the cable right now. All right, that's up. Yay! It finally loaded. For whatever reason, this thing takes a a while to load. All right, as you can see, I have a bunch of random objects already placed. Um, and how I got these objects is over here, we have the holograms application panel, whatever you want to call it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move some of these things a little bit off to the side. so. You can actually see it. So basically what I did here was I just left click and then it brings this thing up. So right now this is it's moving up and down because it's synced with the visor with the headset. So I'm bobbing my head up and down. Um, with the mouse button or with uh, the mouse pointer I can click on it and then I can move it up and down and I can sort of rotate it left and right around me. At least I think that's what it's doing. And if I left click it, uh, left click drag, and I can use the middle mouse button to move it closer and further away from me. Um, so here, if I click on that, then I can scale it, although it's uniform scale, so I can't really stretch it, make it fatter or make it taller. I can only, you know, make the thing bigger or smaller. And here's a, you know, the basic rotate. So with these, there seems to be static models, and then you have the animated models. So I'm going to get the cat over here. I have a preference for cats over dogs. And let's see if we can get this thing to animate. 
Um, it's kind of weird in terms of these controls. So I think if I click here, if I click check, and then if I click on the cat itself, yes, then it's loading the animations, and there you go. Yes, wonderful cat animation. So right now I'm obviously seated because I'm using the mouse to to move this stuff around. Um, there is a standing experience for this thing, um, or room scale, or whatever you want to call it, where I can walk around. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is that I think it needs clear line of sight to um, the laptop or maybe something along those lines, because it seems to get confused if I, for example, duck down below where my desk is, where the laptop sits on top of, and if I you know, duck down and look at the ground like this. So right now, I'm basically kneeling on the ground, um, on all fours, essentially, and I'm looking around. And then here, I am standing all the way up, looking around, And then here's me trying to find my chair. Okay. So as I get closer to the boundary, um, you can see it sort of light up, very similar to how a Steam VR does this. And if you get really close, you see these concentric circles basically telling me I'm going to smash my face into the boundary. In terms of navigation, I've already explained, you know, dragging these things around, placing them. Um, there is a teleport function. So if you right click, it brings up the teleporter. Uh, the interesting thing about the teleporter is if I move the mouse wheel, I, the, the middle mouse button wheel, um, it changes the orientation. So here, if I turn it this way, it's going to look at the holograms application after the teleport. So here. Um, it's kind of an interesting feature to have. Um, it solves you know, some of the usability problems about getting around. Um, what would be better is if I could just rotate in place I, without teleporting to do this. I guess I can always move it so that the teleporting is like right below my feet or as close as possible. And this is as close as it goes. Let's see if I can turn it around. Okay. Yeah. Did that turn around? I wasn't sure. Um, in any case, so I can use this to basically hop around. Um, this might be more interesting with the motion controllers. And then I can actually turn around and look around and so on. Um, as you can see the graphics here are decent. Um, there's some weird oddities, a graphical glitch with the uh, Probably with the Z order for the leaves there, um, but it looks pretty good. If I go over here, now I can look at those floating islands in the distance. It'd be nice if I can actually teleport over to those islands and look around and stuff. Yeah, I guess this is decent. And I think the water is animated. Yeah. So, it's actually pretty cool looking. Um, it's, um, I think it looks a little bit better than the, the Oculus Home. Um, probably very similar to the Oculus Home and the Steam VR Home. And I think I'm going to try to teleport up there. Um, as in on top of this structure. As soon as I can find my mouse again. Oh, there's my mouse. Oh, it's lost itself. So... Can I teleport up there? Come on. Yep, there we go. Yes, yes, boundary lost. Boundary lost. Um, I don't know why it says boundary lost. I should be in the boundary area. It's kind of annoying for that pop-up to float around all the time, but hey. I had this happen once before, and after a little while it sort of found the boundary again somehow. So, come on. Magically find the boundary. Come on. I mean, one of the things I wonder about how this inside-out tracking works is 
originally because during the configuration it asked you to you know, point at the, at the screen, so I assumed that it was using the glow of the screen as a reference point, but now I'm not so sure. So right now I should be faced directly away from the screen. So there's two cameras on the headset on the front, so those cameras should not be able to see the screen because I'm faced you know, completely away from it. Yet somehow it still knows you know, um, what direction I'm looking. So I, I don't know if during the initial calibration it sort of scanned the room and then sort of you know, mapped out what the room looks like and it's using object recognition to, to figure out which part of the room I'm looking at. Or, or is it something more sophisticated? I mean, there's really not a lot of information about how this headset works. I mean, does it have a digital compass? You know, does it have accelerometers? How is this thing even working? I mean, it'd be nice to know things like this. But there you have it, finally working after about two or three days of installing Windows, reinstalling Windows, upgrading, and so on. I mean, much of that time was, you know, uh, running Windows Update and watching my machine reboot for like 30 times in a row, um, or it sitting there and giving me a weird error, and then I would just try again and again and again until it finally was successful. So there you have it. Um, even now, I'm not sure if it's fully operational at times. Um, oftentimes, I get like weird little crashes. I was running this other application called... Uh, Color tour, and the first time I ran it, it just, you know, was all black and did nothing. Uh, second time I ran it, what had happened was um, it was successful. So it ran through this uh, tour of some Peruvian mountains, you know, and gave you like this uh, background history on the Incans that used to live there. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then I tried to make a video out of it, and then that particular run failed got an out-of-memory error. I don't know if it's because of the video recording software or or um, the mixed reality experience, but there we have it for now. I guess I'm reasonably happy with this. Um, I'm going to try to do some development on Unity and then see how it goes from there. So until next time, and hopefully this video will actually take, because this is the third or fourth time I'm recording this video. So there you go. Until next time.